Have you ever found yourself tangled in a web of merge conflicts while using Git? It can be incredibly confusing, right? If that's you, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into the intricacies of Git's merge algorithm, conflict formats, and how they interact with merge tools. I totally get it. Merge conflicts can feel like a puzzle with missing pieces. You're not alone in this struggle. Many users face confusion when it comes to understanding how Git handles merges and conflicts. Let's break down the specific question at hand. One user recently asked about the merging process in Git, particularly how conflicts are represented and how external merge tools interact with Git's system. Sound familiar? If so, let's unravel this together. So what exactly happens during a merge? When you issue a Git merge command, Git uses a specific algorithm to automatically merge changes. It creates several versions of the file, including base, local, other, and backup. If conflicts arise, Git marks them using specific symbols. Understanding this process is crucial for effective conflict resolution. And stick around. At the end of this video, I'll share a pro tip that will help you navigate merge conflicts like a pro. To address the user's confusion about Git's merge process, let's start by clarifying how Git handles conflicts. When the user issues a git merge command, git attempts to automatically merge changes using its built-in algorithm. If there are conflicts, git marks the conflicting sections in the file using specific markers. These markers include the less than symbols, equal signs, and greater than symbols, which indicate the conflicting changes. Next, when the user runs the git merge tool command, the configured external merge tool opens. This tool receives the base, local, and other versions of the file along with the merged output. Now regarding the user's question about whether the external tool understands Git's conflict format, most modern merge tools do support it. However, the diff3 option can provide additional context by showing the base version as well. Finally, when Git performs a recursive merge, it treats inner conflict markers as plain text. This means that if conflicts arise during the merge, they will be displayed just like any other text, rather than being treated as recursive conflicts. Fun fact, did you know that the term merge in programming comes from the idea of combining different branches of a tree? Just like how trees grow, our code evolves too. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. This user provides a detailed explanation of how the Git merge process works, emphasizing that the merge tool is invoked only after Git has completed its merge attempt. They clarify that the first step is to choose a merge strategy, typically the recursive strategy, and identify merge bases. If conflicts arise, Git will mark them in the output. The user explains that the merge tool operates on the results of this process, allowing for further resolution of conflicts. They also highlight that the merge tool does not alter Git's conflict format and that it can apply its own merge algorithm. The user notes that when Git performs a recursive merge, it handles inner conflicts differently, ensuring that the merge tool only sees the final output after all merging is done. Now, let's dive into a different answer from another user. An alternative approach shared by another user explains that merge tools do not directly read the conflict markers in the working directory. Instead, they access the ancestor, ours, and theirs files created by Git when you run the git merge tool command. These tools apply their own logic to generate a merge result and will overwrite the file that Git created. Here's the pro tip I promised. Always familiarize yourself with the documentation of your merge tool. Knowing how it interacts with Git can save you a lot of headaches down the line. And there you have it. You should now have a clearer understanding of Git's merge process and how to handle conflicts. Remember, knowledge is power in the world of coding. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button for more tips, and don't miss our next video on advanced Git techniques.